Hey guys, you know, over the last few years, we experienced a lot of division in the church. Why? Because some men and women started to move away from God's word, the Bible. They look at the Bible and then they only believe those verses that they like. The rest of it, they push it out. And then they add their own beliefs to the words of the Bible. So in other words, they want to change the Bible to fit in with their lifestyle instead of changing their lifestyle to fit in with what the Bible says, with what God's truth says. This is very dangerous, especially for young Christians. So in this video, I'm going to share with you three false teachings of the church or spiritual leaders that you should avoid. Let's just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I'm Daniel Moritz and welcome to DLM Christian lifestyle. If you haven't yet, please subscribe so you won't miss any of those next videos. Now, the Bible is very clear about false prophets and teachers. It warns us in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 to 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. This was happening even at the time of the apostles and it is happening today. But how will you know when someone teaches the truth or when they lie? You test what they say with scripture, with the Bible. And if you don't know what the Bible says and you are a Christian, then you need to read it. You need to study it and it will change your life and you won't be easily misled. All right, now with that in mind, let's start with the first false teaching that you need to know about. Now the first false teaching that is spreading like cancer is this idea that it is God's will for every Christian to be rich and to be healthy. Is this true? Well, definitely not. God does promise us peace. Even if you are going through hard times, He does promise us peace, but He doesn't promise us that we will always be healthy and wealthy. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean that you will suddenly have a perfect life. That only happens when we go to heaven and the new earth. But the Bible is actually very clear on this. And it says that you will have trials and tribulations in this life. John 16 verse 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we will experience hard times in this world. And you know, there's a lot of people who are deeply hurt by this false teaching. Because let's say they have a health problem and they pray and they pray, God, please just help me now. Just take this away from me. And then they go to these preachers and these false preachers and teachers. And then they say, well, it's because you don't have enough faith. You know, you can't use God like a genie and just make wishes. You go to him humbly and you ask him just like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane. We read in Luke 22, verse 42, Jesus said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So you can go to God and you can ask Him for health, to heal you for whatever problem you might have. I mean, it's amazing. We have doctors today as well, and He can use the doctors to heal you as well. But you can go and pray and ask God for a miracle because it still does happen today, even to bless you financially. But that doesn't mean that he's always going to say yes. Sometimes he will stay quiet and sometimes he will say no for a reason. And you need to accept it. Look at the example of Job. He lost everything. Whew, he lost his kids, his wealth, his health. He lost everything. But then at the end of it, God used it to bring him closer and he restored everything. He gave him actually more 
than he had. And this is what Job said. After all, he experienced all those trials and tribulations. This is what Job said. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. So you see, Job only heard about God, but now he sees who God really is. Now he has a deeper relationship with God. And you know, sometimes God will allow pain and suffering in your life to teach you something. We all go through different types of pain and suffering. Some of you who watched my testimony, I've already talked about this and you can watch it at the end of this video. But I lost a lot. But all the suffering and pain that I endured, God used it to bring me closer to Him, to make me humble and to change me, to mold me. And you know, He did it with Paul as well. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 7 to 10, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now listen to this. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. It's interesting. He didn't just name it and claim it and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I proclaim that this thorn in my side be gone. He didn't do that. What did he do? He asked God three times to take it away. And there was no problem with his faith because Paul, <laughs> Paul had faith. He knew God could help him if God wanted to, but he asked God three times. And then what did God say? And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Can you say that in hard times? Are you content with what God allows in your life? Are you greedy? Do you just want more money? Or are you content with just food and clothing? Be very careful for what you pray for. God knows the intentions of your heart. 1 Timothy 6 verse 6 to 11 says, now godliness combined with contentment brings great profit. For we have brought nothing into this world. And so we cannot take a single thing out either. But if we have food and shelter, we will be satisfied with that. Those who long to be rich, however, stumble into temptation and a trap and many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils. Some people in reaching for it have strayed from the faith and stabbed themselves with many pains. But you, as a person dedicated to God, keep away from all of that. Instead, pursue righteousness godliness, faithfulness, love, endurance, and gentleness. God wants your focus to be on Him and the things that are above, eternal life, not on just this earthly, temporary world. And you know, there's nothing wrong about it to be rich. I mean, God does bless a lot of people and He can bless you financially. But then He also expects you to use the money in the right way. The second false teaching is when churches create extra rules, legalism, extra rules for people to be saved. Like for example, some churches say, every Christian can and should speak in tongues to be saved. Or some Christians say, you have to be baptized to be saved. Let's just use these two examples. There are many more, but let's just stick with these two. The Bible is very clear on this. You're only saved through the grace of God. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good 
works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we are saved only by grace through faith. Not grace and works, not grace and speaking in tongues, not grace and baptism, through grace. Romans 10 verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God judges righteously, because he is righteous and he is holy, right? And he's the only one that can truly see a person's heart. And do you remember what Jesus said to the criminal that was also crucified next to him on the cross? And remember, that criminal didn't speak in tongues. He wasn't baptized. We read in Luke 23, verse 39 to 43. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. So Jesus saved this man. Why? Because this man confessed that Jesus is Lord. He confessed it with his mouth and he believed it in his heart. And Jesus saved him. Now, you might ask, well, should I be baptized? Well, yes, because the Bible says that we have to be baptized. So you have to obey God. Acts 2 verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what about speaking in tongues? Should everybody do it? Can everybody do it? Well, no. The Bible is very clear that people have different gifts, spiritual gifts and abilities. It has nothing to do with salvation. Paul is very clear about this. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 4, he says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, and to another discerning of spirits, to another differs kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Now that was very clear, so I don't need to add anything to it. And you know, we shouldn't add anything to the Bible or take anything away. It doesn't matter how I feel about it or you feel about it. If you're uncomfortable with certain passages or verses in the Bible, then it's probably a sign that you actually need to read it and to accept it and to change your lifestyle according to Scripture. The truth will change us. We are imperfect, our thoughts are imperfect, but the Bible is pure. It is God's Word and it is the truth. We need to live by it. Let's move on to the next one. The next false teaching is hyper grace and love. There's a lot of churches that only preach this. So they don't preach the Bible in a balanced way. They leave out that God is holy and righteous. And you know, this is a very dangerous, dangerous false teaching because it leads a lot of people to believe, wow, I can be a Christian and then I can just continue to live in sin and enjoy my sinful lifestyle and do whatever I want to do because you know, wow, God is just love. He's gracious. So 
He's forgiven if, even if I'm gonna sin tomorrow, he's already forgiven that. That's what some of these people preach. This is a misuse of scripture and it is not true. And if you live this way, then you're probably not a real Christian. You did not have a real encounter with the God of the universe. Because if you did, you would be a new creation. Romans 6 verse 1 to 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, ye servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 18 says, Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. So the Bible is very clear that you are free from sin if you obey God in righteousness. And you know, there are thousands of people out there who believe that they are saved, that they are Christians. But you know, Jesus himself said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. <sighs> this is the truth. Please listen very carefully. Don't be deceived by false teachers and preachers and churches who just preach things that your fleshly nature wants to hear. Listen very carefully. The great falling away is when the majority of the church justifies sin and demonize those preaching against it. Now, I'm not saying these things to be liked by people because a lot of people will hate me. Some of you who are watching this video might hate me right now. But I'm not saying all of these things because I'm weird or I just want to be judgmental. I'm saying it because it is the truth. And only the truth changes lives. True change only comes when the gospel is preached in a truthful and balanced way. Yes, we are saved only by grace through real faith in Jesus Christ. But you need to know what true faith is. A motivational message might make you feel good for a day or two, but it won't last. Only the truth will change you. And if you don't know what a true Christian really is, then check out this video and I'll see you there. And remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye.